Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me um, start off by saying that I specifically, purposely, and intentionally told people, hey, do not email us about the new program. Do not email us about the microtrusts. If you do, certain things are going to happen. And guess what? At least 15 different emails, text messages, and even through Telegram, individuals just can't follow instructions. So I'm going to ignore each of those people, every single one of them, just like I said I would. I'm not going to block them just yet. It depends on if they ask again. Then I will block them. Don't know why. People don't know how to pay attention. You see, when you focus and you pay attention, it costs you something. It costs you your time. It costs you your focus. That's why you have to pay it. Lord, have mercy. Look, I told everybody about credits. I said, tax credits, that's your best friend. You guys need to get the no tax credits, man. That fool going to stay around for a long time. He's perpetual. That's right. Tax credits are perpetual. Now, I refer to them as tax credits. The code refers to them as reductions and deductions. Well, guess what? Let me show you something. Let me show you something. One second. What is the maximum deduction for business expenses? For 2023 tax year, small business owners can deduct a maximum of $1,160,000 in depreciation for qualifying assets. If you want to claim a depreciation tax deduction, you must fill out that farm. Ladies and gentlemen, ain't nobody talking about no depreciation. But do you see? Uh-oh, I don't want to leave. Oh, yeah, no, that's a website I was on. Uh-oh, it said, cancel. Get on out of here. Sorry, apologize. <laughs> I haven't been back there in a while. <sighs> what deductions can I claim without receipts? Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to have the actual physical receipt. All you have to do is have a statement. Just like they have lost notes, you can have lost receipts. It's okay. All you have to do is have the product to prove. Take pictures of it. There it is right there, homie. You see this model right here? This model didn't come out in 1946. This model came out in 2018. Mother... Okay? Just that simple. Stop taking things literally. And respond literally. What's the difference? Well, when you take things literally, you don't know how to think right. When you respond literally, taking their word, word for word, then you can get through, get around, get up, get down. You know what I mean? <sighs> Nobody cares about office equipment, computers, printers, scanners, but you can deduct those things. That's right. 100% deductible car rentals, hotels, business travel, and associated costs. Aw. Uh, oh, by the way, gifts to client and employees are 100% deductible. Pay attention. Pay attention. I want you to make sure that you understand. Don't do that. Don't just be deducting gifts because you want to deduct gifts. Y'all need to understand. Write-offs. And deductions. Can you deduct your groceries? That's the cost of living, ladies and gentlemen. See, the cost of groceries used for business purposes can be considered a legitimate business expense. The cost of living. The cost of doing business. But here's what I'm going to suggest. Just a suggestion. You don't write that junk off as a business expense. The cost of grocery? Oh, God, no. You write off the expense itself. You weren't buying groceries. You just have to figure out how else to document it. Why would you say I wrote off some Tide with bleach? Because I had to do my laundry for my business. Uh, a tie. Why, why would you do that? that? That's way too much. That's too much work. 
Okay, that I'm I'm just telling you, that's too much work sitting up there itemizing every single deduction. No, you itemize the group as a business expense. Okay? And you say no, it included lunch, travel, and all of that. Oh yeah, we we have a particular fund that we pull from, and all of those items are included from that fund. Yeah, that's that's what that expense is. It covers all of that. Well, we need you to break it down. No, you don't. You need to break it down. No, what I did is I told you what the expense went for. Now, if you're telling me that that's not accurate, that's not correct, I just need you to show me proof that it's not accurate and correct. I need you to show me proof that I'm mis- documenting it that i'm lying homie because that's what they saying they say you lying you a king okay that's what they no that's what they saying they saying you a lying king 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 i didn't say it they said it they they so now you guys have got to learn how to write off your deductions your expenses your reduction in your taxes. Like I said, I can show you how to do it perpetually. I can show you how to... Now, this is not the limit, okay? This is not the limit. This is just a number that somebody then came up with. Pay attention. Because remember, this is qualifying assets. This is just for assets. This ain't even talking about all the other deductions. But I can show you how to make that perpetual every single year. Without let up. Every single year. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to tell my grandmom. I'm not going to tell my grandsister. I'm not even going to tell anybody during consults. But I'm going to keep that one to myself. Why? Because I'm not trying to sit up here and cause disruption in the economy. We have too many other things out there doing that. that that's not the purpose of all of this. The purpose of all of this is pay attention it's to let you know that there are options. Some of you can figure it out. I say just enough for the information to be viable. And I say just enough for you not to be able to rely on just the information alone that you have to go a little bit above and beyond what I'm telling you. Some of you understand because some of you know how to take what I say and do research on it based on how I say things because you've come to understand how I say things. Others, sorry, and I'm not going to explain it to you. See, if those people, the ones who are able to understand what I'm saying and to move on from there, who wait? Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Now we're going to open up ChatGPT for a moment, okay? Hey, can I write off you utilities? Hold on. You may be able to claim utilities on your taxes if you work from home and are self-employed. Of course you work from home. Of course you have a sole proprietorship. Of course you can write off your utilities. It's the cost of living. Oh, you don't understand that living is a business? Wait a minute. Y'all didn't know that? Wait, y'all didn't know that you living that's your business wait a minute you didn't know that you're taking care of your daily needs is a business well, you're dependent come on now you take care of yourself you get to write yourself off as a dependent and all of the expenses associated with the dependency is right off of both okay hold on wake up can i write off my expenses related to caring for a dependent stop listening stop listening yes if you itemize your deductions and your parent was your dependent either at the time of the medical service you provided, or at the time you paid the expenses, you can claim the deduction for the portion of their expenses that you paid in the taxable year, not compensated by insurance or otherwise. 
actually, you can write it off as compensated by insurance. Why? Because the insurance company didn't pay it. You paid that. Pay attention. That's your policy. That policy doesn't belong to the insurance company. You paid the premiums. That's how the policy is set up. So, yes, you can write that junk off. Shh, don't tell nobody. Okay, you just have you guys have to understand how the code is written. Okay? The cost of living is a business. Taking care of myself is a job. Okay? All right, watch this. We go to chat GPT for a second. <clears throat> Wake up. Did you know comma that taking care of oneself can be considered a business? Stop listening. Yes, taking care of oneself can indeed be considered a business, particularly within the context of the wellness and self-care industries. Here are a few examples. One, health and wellness coaching. Professionals provide guidance and support to individuals looking to improve their health and well-being. Two, fitness and personal training. Personal trainers and fitness instructors. Stop listening. I mean, wake up. I'm sorry, you took my question out of context. Comma, I didn't say someone taking care of me can be a business. Comma, I already know that. Comma, but taking care of myself. Comma, providing for my daily needs. Comma, my cost of living. Comma, because I have the right to life. And my right to life, I can pursue as a common occupation. Comma, i.e., colon. Minding my own business, comma, as an occupation. Stop listening. Ladies and gentlemen, he understands now. Now, by, by, pay attention. He, <laughs> watch this. Hold on. I understand now. You are referring to the concept of taking care of oneself as a form of personal business or occupation. This idea aligns with the principle of self-sufficiency and the pursuit of life as an inherent right. From a legal and philosophical perspective, life. the right to life can oh. be seen as encompassing the right to manage and sustain. Oh existence. no, they, 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 you gotta one, be kidding me. employment and freelancing. Individuals can choose to work independently, providing services. Okay, <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, I'm not just making this stuff up as I go along. I've always known this junk. I've known this because that was my thinking at the age of 15. Uh, Maxine Waters. Maxine, I'm talking about you again, woman. Maxine Waters, me and several other individuals, including my elder sister. She's only elder by 10 months, but including my older sister, sat in those classrooms. I just took the information a lot more seriously than most people. Because we went over tax forms. I was 15 years old, ladies and gentlemen. How many of you can say you were going over taxes at the age of 15? I'm, I'm not joking with you. I've already told you all about the story. WLCAC, Watts Labor Action Community Commission. Or WLC, Watts Labor AC, Action Community, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, that was Maxine Waters nonprofit organization that she was a part of. She turned it into a school. It's actually a full-fledged school at this time. But she taught us taxes. And I learned taxes. And I started thinking about it from the standpoint of the way it was written. I've always been a logical and literal person. So I've always used logic. If I have the right to life, if I have the right to pursue happiness, and I didn't even tell him about the right to pursue happiness. He said that. See, I have the right to pursue any occupation that I choose. That's my right. The government can't tell me what occupation to choose. That's my right. It's an inherent right. It's an unalienable right. They don't have any say-so 
over what common occupation I choose. This approach to life emphasizes personal autonomy, responsibility, and the right to use one's time and resources to support one's own existence and well-being. It reflects a broader understanding of business. My personal business, mother... Okay, hold on now. As not only commercial enterprises, but also personal endeavors that contribute to one's livelihood and fulfillment. Wake up! Can you provide me the part of the Internal Revenue Code that allows me to write off such expenses associated with such personal business? I don't want nuances, comma, I don't want clarifications, comma, I want the specific code and I will come to my own conclusions. Exclamation mark. Stop listening. Ooh, wait! He gonna sit up here and give me a bunch of codes, y'all, that tells me I get to write that junk off. Related to personal business activities. For more detailed application of potential exceptions, please refer directly to the full text of the section of the code. Personal business activities. You see, because the code does not define business. Pay attention. See? Personal, living, and family expenses. Whoa! They already consider that stuff? This section permits the deduction of ordinary and necessary expenses paid or incurred for the production and collection of income and for the management of conservation, maintenance of property held for the production of income. Well, my property is not used for the production of income. I don't use my property as a business property. If I did, I'd have to pay property taxes. Oops. <sighs> now, the code does not have a definition for business, so my personal business is not excluded from ordinary business income. Okay, watch this. Wake up. Wake up. According to the Internal Revenue Code, comma, what is the definition of business? I don't want the definition for trade or business, comma, I want the specific definition for business. Do not give me nuances or clarifications, comma, I don't want to hear it. Comma, if there is no definition, then just simply say there is no definition in the IRC for business. Comma, don't give me any other definition, don't give me any other clarification, don't give me any other nuances. Is that understood? Stop listening. There is no definition in the Internal Revenue Code for business. So, ladies and gentlemen, when it talks about business, Anything can be considered a business. My clipping my toenails is a business. My sitting up here and doing videos on YouTube is a business. I can write off all of my business expenses known as net operating losses. Watch this. Wake up. Wake up. Net operating losses or NOLs are defined as what? Stop listening. And the term net operating loss means the excess of deductions allowed by the chapter over gross income computed with the modifications specified in Section D. Excuse me? Ladies and gentlemen, it just means 
my losses while doing business. So anything that isn't considered part of my profits is considered a net operating loss. Businesses get to write off their net operating losses. Oh, snap! Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> I will tell you this. That's what makes it partially perpetual. This is not the perpetual understanding that I was talking about. This is a perpetual understanding because it is perpetual. You just keep writing off your losses every single year because businesses are allowed to write off their losses. Don't believe me? Go ask Donald. The Donald! Go ask the Donald. He does it every single year. That's why he ain't never going broke. For him, he understands part of the perpetuality of it. But I understand a different aspect of perpetuality. Whew, I can, man, I can teach you how to have $20 million in tax credits annually, but I'm not going to. Annually, that's 100% legal, and there's nothing they can do about it. I can teach you how to have $2 billion or $8 billion. I can teach you how to have $18 trillion in tax credits annually, and there's nothing they can do about it because of the way the code is written. I'm not going to do that. that. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm not going to teach that to people. Now, if there's other people out there who know what I'm talking about, and I think there might be at least probably 100 people out there who understand what I'm talking about throughout the entire planet. I know, I know, I know. Some of you guys are going to be trying to think about it, but you're not going to get it. You're not going to get it because it's got some complications to it. I mean, it's so basic and simple but you have to understand the complicated part of it in order to get to the basic and simple. I know, I know some of you are going to guess too bad because you're all going to guess wrong because you don't think linear. You think inside the little box. And as long as you stay inside the little box, as I told people, it's all right to think inside the box. It's just many of you don't realize that you can expand the box you can make the box larger if you're going to think inside the box simply make the box larger i don't know why people don't understand that that's just the way it is it's been that way for quite some time y'all just got to make the box larger that's all you got to do once you make that box larger hooey man who knows how encompassing that box will be for the whole universe. All right. Hey, I got to go. I just wanted to share this base, 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 basic information with you. Now, for those of you who are wondering about the lawsuit, I we gave people a certain deadline for being a part of it at the beginning. You, everybody will be able to join in later. Okay. But for right now, we gave people a certain deadline. That deadline is come and gone. And everybody's still asking. Can I be a part of that? No, not now. You'll have to wait. We're going to let you know once everything is filed, there's a process. But I had to protect my interests, people. That's why I put that information out there. When you go after a juggernaut like this, they think that they can play with you. Remember the guy who whistle blew against Boeing? Well, the problem is, he didn't document everything, put it on the record, and then send it out to so many people. And then do his testimony under interview. Because, see, if he had done it with a notary and all of that stuff, whoa, do you know what would have been done? Hoo-wee! Ain't nothing they could do about it. Ain't nothing they could do about it. All right, so got to take care of the notary part we're doing some amendments ladies and gentlemen to the document what you receive we had to add certain things such as the monies that are paid see we don't want them fractional reserving and making that part of the payment no no no. we want this coming from their assets we we want this coming from their assets they can fractional reserve bank all they want but on their books, we want it coming from their assets. We don't want it coming from the taxpayers, and nor can they put the cost back on the taxpayers. You know, see, they always put it back on the taxpayers, and the taxpayers are the ones who are left holding the bag, so to speak. No, with this lawsuit, no, we have stipulated that they don't get to put this back on the taxpayers. So this will affect their books. Ta-da!
Now remember, Congress could have paid off its debt to the Federal Reserve anytime it wanted to. Remember, it redefined what gold was. It could have paid off the debt to the Federal Reserve, but the Federal Reserve wants the metal, the precious metal. Well, the Supreme Court has already held several cases where no one can demand precious metals as payment. So Congress could have paid off the Federal Reserve a long time ago. But what didn't they do? They held on to the contract. Why? Because they need to stay in debt. Why? Why do they need to stay in bankruptcy? Because by the United States staying in bankruptcy, they get to keep this stupid economy going. Without this economy, they can't function. You see, this economy doesn't work unless they're in debt, because they're using debt to pay debt. If they were not in debt bankruptcy, they would not be able to continue the and sustain this stupid system right now. You just got to understand what's going on. Once you understand, then you'll get it. So, ladies and gentlemen, tax credits are perpetual. Tax deductions and tax reductions are perpetual. Taxes are dollar for dollar. Watch this. You don't believe me? Watch. We're going to put that in here. Wake up. Wake up. Did you know that taxes are dollar for dollar in the United States? Stop listening. I'm going to let him tell you. I ain't going to read it to you. Yes, in the United States, taxes are generally assessed and paid on a dollar for dollar basis. This means that the tax liability is calculated based on the taxable income or taxable event, and the taxpayer is required to pay the exact amount of tax owed in dollars. Wake up. Did you know, according to the IRC, comma, there is no such thing as, open quote, income tax, close quote. There is only, open quote, gross income tax, close quote. And that income tax is not the same as gross income tax under the IRC. Stop listening. He's going to try to explain. I mean, look, see, that's why he's doing all that. Now watch this. I'm going, I'm going to listen to him for a second, then I'm going to shut him up. According to the Internal Revenue Code, IRC, the term income tax is commonly used, but the concept of gross income tax is not explicitly defined as a separate category. Instead, the IRC defines and discusses gross income and taxable income in various sections. Here are the relevant definitions. One. Now watch this. I knew he was going to do that. Wake up. Wake up. I didn't ask you for your opinion, comma, I didn't ask you for a general response, comma, my question was specific, comma, that gross income and income are not synonymous. That income is not defined in the IRC in the form of, open quote, income tax, close quote. Comma, that gross income tax is what is defined, period. Nobody asked you whether or not gross income includes income, comma, because that's not the question, you moron. Comma, so keep your opinion to yourself, comma, keep your clarifications to yourself, comma, keep your stupidity to yourself and answer the question specifically. Without nuances. Stop listening. I want you all to pay attention because this is important.
There is no definition in the Internal Revenue Code, IRC, for income tax specifically. The IRC defines gross income in Section 61, but it does not define gross income tax as a separate term from income tax. Ah, uh, but it does not define gross income tax as a separate term from income tax. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no such thing as income tax in the IRC. Okay, go ahead. Go take a look. Do your research. So all of you people who are paying income tax, it's voluntary because there's no such thing as income tax in the IRC. The IRC only defines gross income, which includes income, but it does not define income that can be taxed because there is no such thing as income tax in the IRC. It only defines gross income tax. That's why it's all voluntary, people. But people have been saying the wrong stuff for too many years. I've known this <laughs> literally since I was 18. I told you, I'm the guy who wrote the Internal Revenue Service when I turned, I think I was about 22. Told him I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. As one of Jehovah's Witnesses, I have to obey the law. And as I read the law, there is no such thing as income tax. And thus, that would qualify me as a non-taxpayer. I didn't get this out of no book. I didn't go to no web. Oh, there were no websites at that time. Go back. That's <laughs> 1988. Between 1988 and 1989, I did this. There is no such thing. And I knew that then. I, I'm not a taxpayer as defined in statute. Now, hold on now. I'm a taxpayer now. That's right. I pay taxes now. Why? Because I engage in commerce. Okay? Engaging in commerce is a privilege, not a right. So I pay my taxes. But I pay my taxes with tax credits. I don't pay my taxes out of my pocket. There's no reason for me to do that when I get to write off my expenses because I do everything as a business. Sorry. I just talked about engaging in commerce. That's the matrix, ladies and gentlemen. As long as you participate, as long as you participate, you get to go in and out of the system. You get to be Neil. Because when you participate, that participation is a job. That participation is right offable. And so you get the right to junk off. If only you knew. Patty LaBelle, where are you when you need them? If only you knew. Well, ladies and gentlemen, <sighs> wasn't planning on doing this, doing this, but I'm glad I finally got the opportunity of talking to y'all about taxes. Like I said, I'm not the tax guy. I'm not the guy you go looking for taxes. Now, what I will tell you is there's an organization that I started, and they're trying to help educate people, but people are still not getting it. Okay, there is, I had to explain this to them yesterday because they didn't want to confuse people, but if you have a business relationship, let's say Bank of America and you had a business relationship, and let's do this because y'all need to understand this. Uh, let's see, Bank of America, let's see, we're going to do... Watch this, 1099. C! Okay, 1099C. Now, HR Brock, that's because it's a sponsored link and nobody cares about them. We care about this one right here. We need the instructions. Instructions. Y'all heard me, instruction. Okay, go talk to the people who speak Latin. They understand what I just say it. We can go here. Now, we're going to do a control F or command F if you have a Mac. And we're going to do a word search. So we're going to look for, pay attention. U-N-T-I-L. Until the end of time, I'll be there for you. You are my heart and mind. Truly, I adore you. Beauty wise man. That to divine your beauty I feel see 
I'm sorry, that is Adore by Mr. Prince. But from the first moment I saw you, I got to go and play that song again. Except for the part that he says, I <clears throat> just for kicks, I, I, I can't play that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, exceptions. Until further guidance, no penalty for failure to supply you, the borrower, the debtor, the so-called individual who has a right to receive it, for them not providing you with the statements proving that the debt has been forgiven, proving that they've received the write-off, proving that they've received the charge-off, proving that they've received the dollar-for-dollar -dollar credits. Until further notice. Now that's one of four. Hold on. Let's go to the next one. Got out of here. Until further notice on Remix, your mortgages, mortgage-backed securities, further notice, further guidance. This has been going on since 2012, ladies and gentlemen. No penalty shall be applied for failure to give you your statements. Wait a minute. They're obligated under law to give you the statements, so the IRS cannot excuse them from obeying the law. It's just saying it won't assess a penalty. And so that's why you don't get your 1099-Cs anymore. This is the reason why. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Make sure you get it. Until further notice. Until further notice, until further guidance, until further guidance, there'll be no penalties, there'll be no penalties imposed for failure to provide you your statement. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a business relationship with these individuals. That's why you're called a debtor. That's a business relationship. It's a creditor debtor relationship. It's a business relationship. Well, that means you have a partnership, partner. And because you have a partnership, that's where the K-1 comes in. K-1? What you mean about a K-1? I ain't heard nothing about nobody told me nothing about no K-1. Oh, come on now, K. Oh, no. It's a 1065. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's let's do it right. We can't just do K-1. Uno, cero, se, cinco. Or se, cinco. Ladies and gentlemen, the schedule, K-1, form 1065. Some of you have received these. This is for partners and credits and deductions. Well, when you get a mortgage, you have a partner, okay? Well, ladies and gentlemen, y'all need to be giving your partner their credit. Man, they're your partner. You don't just sit up there and just let your partner just sit up there and just be dangling on the middle of the street. The partner got to get the credit. Oh, but then you also got to write off that credit that you gave your partner as an expense, as a loss. Who are we? See, both parties are taken care of. One gets the expense credit, one gets the credit credit, and they both get credit. Yay! The K-1 operates as a receipt. Let's prove this to you because some of y'all don't understand this. Then we're going to let y'all go because I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I got work to do. Wake up. Wake up. I have a business partner, comma, and my business partner loaned me $800,000, and the Federal Reserve, by law, gave them $800,000 in return, comma, this evidenced our business relationship and documented the transfer of the funds. Period. I need to document the receipt of the $800,000 and the credit to the business partner of $800,000 on a K-1. And then I need to write off the $800,000 as a business expense. Why is it possible to do this, according to the IRC? Stop listening. <sighs> 
ladies and gentlemen, nobody has taught me this stuff. I've known this, like I said, only because when I was between 15 and 18 years old, this was the research. And I've held on to it all this time without being a part of groups Based on or your anything. Scenario, here are the relevant IRC sections that could support documenting the receipt of the loan, crediting your business partner on a K-1, and potentially writing off the $800,000 as a business expense. Thank you. Shut up. One. Shut up. No, no, we ain't going to go back to one. We're going to stop at one. Ladies and gentlemen, again... All of your expenses are right offable if you just document it properly. The K-1, sorry, we got one more thing. Wake up. Wake up. So the K-1, in such an instance, can be evidence or a receipt of the transaction between the parties. Stop listening. Let me uh, stop him. I didn't ask him for that. Wake up. I asked you a simple question. I didn't ask you to explain anything to me or for nuances. Comma, just answer my question. Now watch this. You're an idiot, comma. The K-1 does indeed operate as a receipt, comma, because it shows the credits being received by the partner and it shows the net operating losses, which operates as debits and credits or the accrual method, comma. How dare you claim it cannot operate as a receipt? exclamation mark and no one said anything as a receipt of a loan transaction you moron stop listening i'm sorry ladies and gentlemen give me yes, a second a schedule k1 can show the uh, credits and other allocations to the partner which can serve as evidence of transactions between the partnership and the partner Yay! Evidence of a transaction, i.e. receipt. Yay! You have to learn how to use the language models in order to use the language models. You can't just ask a question and get an answer and think that you can run with that. You have to understand why it is programmed to do exactly what it just did. Like I said, I already know the answer to my question. I already know the K-1 is my receipt showing that they got paid. And I also used the K-1 to do my 1099 so I can get my tax credits. Yay! See, some of you are not understanding this, and that's where everything's going awry. But once you understand, once you understand, then you understand. All right, finally, ladies and gentlemen, I used to communicate with quite a few people this type of information for free just communicating and we would have conversations those individuals in one shape form fashion or another have decided to go on with their lives you know they got distracted there's so many other things going on and i've let them go i'm not breaking my neck to call a single one of them they don't get to call me now they'll go to voicemail real quick because when I let you into my little private little sphere and you don't appreciate me letting you into my private little sphere, no, it ain't about you. I could care less about your little private sphere. I'm not trying to be a part of your group. But when I let you in and I give you information and then I don't hear from you for over a month, then let me tell you something. You get put on the list. I don't care if you got a life. I don't care if you got so many things going on. I don't care if your wife just got diagnosed with cancer. I could care less. No, I mean that seriously. Because it works out like this. I don't like being used. Okay, what did Grandmaster Flash say? Being used and abused. You served until one day you were found hung in a cell. 
Okay, I don't like being used. So, uh, individuals leave me hanging. Why you leave me hanging? Okay, and so because many of them choose to leave me hanging, I'm going to leave them permanently. I ain't mad. I ain't holding no grudges. I just don't have time. Ladies and gentlemen, there are some things coming down the pike right now. You guys really need to understand what's going on, and there are certain things I can't tell you. Certain things that I told certain people was coming, and now I just saw a report yesterday as to the fact that it's here. And what they're doing, it is so obvious, but I can't, and I can't tell you because you'll start doing research on it and you'll bring attention to yourself. And this is enough attention that can get you killed because of what they're planning on doing to the population. I'm not joking about it. Like I said, I've been telling people about this since 2015. And it has everything to do with the coming pandemic. Lord have mercy, it has everything to do with the coming pandemic. What? You thought that last junk? <laughs> Man, that was a precursor. Okay, they needed to make people susceptible. Lord have mercy, I just wish people would pay attention. That wasn't a pandemic, people. Okay, they purposely did what they did. That's why most of the people who died, died as a result of what? They didn't die as a result of the pandemic. Go back and take a look. Don't take my word for it. Go back and look at the CDC. They got the report. So, I told people about this in 2017. Did a video before I went and did the New York seminar. And told people they were going to come after me. It took them a year, but they did come. <laughs> and then the next thing you know, where I can't be out there saying, I told y'all this was going to happen. They put me inside a nice little vacation home. And then I got to watch everybody act surprised. So, ladies and gentlemen, there's one more coming. One more coming. All right, I gotta go. I, I gotta go take care of YouTube. They they blocked one of my videos, the one where I told you about the Federal Reserve and how they do the fractional reserve banking. They blocked that video saying it was a scam or it was fraud. What the? <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so let me go take care of them. Y'all take care of y'all sales, okay? Gotta go. Gotta go.